But let us continue with this thought process that what you claim to have found as archaeological proof or written proof of your Bible being inspired by God and that your Bible is true is not proof at all. If it, if it was so, then there are many other things that we can say is true. And if this is your standard, then you're going to have to accept those as well. In your first statement, you talk about how the fact that science has proven that there is a water cycle and that the Bible talks about that the earth went through a water cycle first and that would make the Bible true. Well, the comedic story, which was told and written before the biblical story was ever told and written, spoke of how Neb and Jude, the waters from above and waters from below, were in a locked embrace and that the earth was pure water. And then the wind, Shu, came in and separated Neb, Jeb, and Nu, and that created the firmament, the land, rather. That created the land. You would then, based on your logic, you would then have to say that the Egyptian story is true. The comedic story is true because they talked about a water cycle prior to that. The people, the many different groups in Indonesia talked about a water cycle. So then you should accept that their ancient religion is true as well. Uh, the Hindu, water cycle first. Theirs is true. All right, New Zealanders, the Samoans, water cycle, water cycle first. Theirs is true. You see, many different cultures talk about a water cycle before the land came about. So you would then have to say that all of theirs is true. And just because science has proven that there was a time frame when the earth was mostly covered by water, because here's the thing, the earth has never really fully, 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 fully been covered by water. It's not enough water on the planet in order to do that. But hmm, hmm, yeah, go to research that and you'll find that out. So that part, we can just cut that out. Then you talk about how um, in another comment, or maybe it's in this comment, I don't know, I'm not reading it again, that the Bible talks about the earth was being a sphere your bible your bible contradicts itself if that's the case because your bible talks about the four corners of the earth that jesus saw all the kingdoms of the earth from the top of a mountain which would mean that it is a flat earth four corners mean that it is a flat earth so your bible actually teaches a flat earth which is why flat earth was something that was taught until galileo and copernicus uh, went against that and then later on more and more scientists and they said nah you're wrong but then here's the thing the doguns taught that the earth was a sphere without your Bible. The Kemetic talked about the earth was a sphere without your Bible. The Aboriginals down in Australia talked about the earth was a sphere without your Bible. So then you must accept that their religions are also true because within their religion, they talk about the earth being a sphere, a sphere as well. So, sorry, your logic is just not working, not adding up. Then you say as far as prophecy fulfilled with Israel becoming one nation in one day. Bro, do you really think it takes one day? That one day. Your way of saying that Israel became a nation in one day, I can say Liberia became a nation in one day, that Kenya became a nation in one day, that Botswana became a nation in one day, that uh, South Africa became a nation in one day, that all these countries that came out of colon colonialism, that they became that in one day because there was a set day that they became their own nation. These things are progress and go through a progress. And speaking from somebody who uh, participated in the nation building of Latvia, Latvia, Latonia, and um, Lithuania uh, during the 90s, we, they didn't come, become their own nation away from the Soviet Union in one day. It was a process of things that occurred, and then they became their own nation. So Israel did not become its own nation over that one day. There was this little thing, little thing called World War II, right? And then because of World War II, after it ended, part of all the negotiations that went on, Israel was then established as a country, but there were days, weeks, months of negotiating, of conversations, of meetings that determined and made Israel a country. So it did not happen in one day. There was one day that it started, but it did not all of a sudden, all the world leaders who fought, who dealt with that area during World War II said, you know what? We all woke up. We're going to make Israel a nation today. Boom. It's a nation today. Hell no. There was a lot of negotiation that happened prior to that, dude. So you don't understand world affairs, obviously. But it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But I've done nation building before. And it takes more than one day in order for that to happen. Okay. And then you say that because they uh, was going through some caves and they found these Assyrian uh, kings list, uh, a list, the Assyrian kings list, uh, 
that that validates the Bible because the Bible also talks about that same king's list. That does not make it reality. That doesn't make it real, right? Just because they say that. Other books talks about king's list, mention other kings from the past and we validated those. Homer's, Ollie, Homer's idiot, Iliad and Odyssey, making both of them one, Iliad and Odyssey speaks of the city of Troy. Now, the city of Troy was thought to be a mythical city for a very long time until I forgot the guy's name went and used the Iliad and Odyssey to find the actual city of Troy. So the city of Troy existed. Now, does that mean the sirens existed? Does that mean the Cyclops existed? Does that mean Hector existed? Does that mean Achilles existed? No, it does not. Finding the city of Troy does not validate every other aspect of the, the Iliad and the Odyssey because they found the actual city to which Homer was speaking of. The mere fact is this. Homer just knew of the city and used the city as a backdrop. Just as you go watch a movie. I just finished watching the movie Rampage again the other day. They used, this, they used the city of Chicago as a backdrop for the movie even though it was filmed mostly in Atlanta, but they used the city of Chicago as a backdrop for the city. Does that mean that a big-ass wolf, a big-ass gorilla, and a big-ass uh, alligator came and destroyed the city? No, it does not. Chicago was just a backdrop, and it wasn't even Chicago for the most part. It was shot mostly here in Atlanta. Movie magic at its best. But hey, keep trying, man. Fact of the matter is this. You cannot prove it. You cannot prove the miracles and most of the and most if not most of the people that the Bible claims existed. You can't prove them. Just because a few people can be proven, like Pontius Pilate or somebody like that, or an emperor, you know, Nero can be proven through the coins that show him aging, Julius Caesar coins that show him aging. Just because we can have those people and we can prove those people more so than your Jesuses and Abrahams and all of them does not mean that your people can't be proven. Show me some pottery. Show me some um, uh, 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 actual burial chamber with a name on it. Show me some uh, uh, more than some scripts. Show me the 20, 125 different historians who was alive during the time frame of Jesus, yet none of them wrote about Jesus. I would take that literature before I take uh, Pliny the Younger and, Ty and Tacitus and all these other people who were not there, who were not even born during the time frame. But anyway, man, hey, for everybody else, I appreciate you. Continue to uh, share the channel, share the videos. Thank you for all the gifts and uh, financial gifts. Thank you for all that, stars and whatnot. And continue to free yourself, to be yourself, because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good vibrations.